All right, we are here with uh, the German captain Matthew Hintz again, and uh, we're going to talk to him first about the uh, Germany Uruguay game for a little bit. Uh, uh, Jeremy Hatchin and I were just finished talking about it, and he said that in uh, that in particular, or I I said it as well, is that they that Uruguay is going to want to make it a little more a little bit more open. What do you think about that? It'll it'll be definitely tough because um, like you guys both uh, touched base on and noted, um, one of the main Strengths for us is actually our strength. Um, you got me. I mean, as you can see, watching home, I'm a big guy. Um, I'm not gonna be pushed around easy. Um, you got Graham Foreman, who's um, kicking ass and taking names at the Citadel. I mean, he's he's military. He's big. He's strong. Um, and then even on defense, we got um, Thomas Paradis bring out the back line. Um, and though, in, even though he's not the, he's like. He's got the least strength on the team. That's not saying he's weak. He's he's still strong. He's still big. He's over six foot. Um, kind of Joe Blazer type. Kind of Joe Blazer type. He's um, he's in there. He plays tough D, and um, and so I think while we might get we, it might um, hurt us a little more because we're not able to plant and push and they open things up. I still think we'll be all right. We'll have Thomas in the back and he'll play superb D and with Prabhat and goal. Once he gets those hands up. It's tough to break through that wall, and that's that's what I like. If, if they open it up, it'll be different. It'll be tougher, but I think we'll still do all right. All right. The one thing that the one player that I always will key on and, and I'm watching you guys play is Graham Foreman. And mm -hmm. Jeremy and I were talking about this earlier, actually, before the show. We were talking about how of all the players on the team, you're the best player, but Graham Foreman is probably the most irreplaceable player. Mm -hmm. what, what would you agree? Or oh you yes, agree? definitely, definitely agree. Um, the way he deals with the ball in the midfield and the way he works in transition, it just helps the team out so much. Um, a lot of times when we're attacking the shallow end, it'll be me up top all by myself and him and Thomas back on D. But as soon as I get the ball up top, next thing I know when I turn back around, he's up there with me. He's calling for the ball. He's looking. He's seeing where the d defense is. And he just instinct he instinctively knows where to go. Um, whether that be come up and try and help me and we'll muscle our way through, or he'll try and sneak around the back and do a back pass and draw defenders, draw defenders, which will either open up the lane for me, or I mean he's got a good arm on him too. He's got yeah, he's, um, if you look at the stats from last year, he netted quite a few, um, and so he's got he's got a good attacking sense to him as well. So I can easily dish the ball off to him, and then if our attack does get stalled too, um, if us to keep possession of the ball, and that just makes time for uh, Thomas to come up, and he, he snuck in quite a few last year from the back, and so it's great. We'll have three guys on the attack, but uh, to get back to the original point, yes, I do think Graham is a tremendous asset for the team, and we play, um, like Jeremy touched base on, in the third place game, we were without him, we were without Thomas, and whole different team, whole different style, and right. whole different outcome. Well, and actually, what one thing that people might not know about your team is the only two games that Grant Foreman missed last year were the were the two games mm -hmm. that you're, yes, or the, exactly. the three games because I think I believe he missed the semifinals as well against what else? Uh, he, he might have been. Uh, he might have been there. Well, or, and then yeah, that was that's uh, yeah, whole well, different thing. Wales Wales was a great team, and you guys great did, team. You guys kept it very close. We, with him we and, with thought we team. had him in the end, and then as the uh, last seconds or should I say the last half hour <laughs> of stoppage time. Um, but I won't, I won't go into that. I'll just leave that be. Well, I, and I, uh, you know, if when we play you guys, I'll definitely be doing the scouting report, and it'll be, it'll be someone I'll watch as well. I, Uruguay hasn't received a lot of press. Uh, they're a pretty unknown team from South America, uh, but uh, they did beat out Argentina in qualification, and you guys mm -hmm. did last year, so uh, that should be interesting. Um, no, definitely. I mean, they're they're not a team where we're – I mean, it'd be, it'd be so easy just to ride them off. We're a big European team. Big, strong experience. Last year's great contenders in last year's tournament. Definitely. It'll be so easy just to write them off, but we know that um, that we just can't do that. We got to take every game as if it's a must-win because essentially, when you get down to it, you have three games, and if you lose one of them, it's you know you could be out. When you learned that last year, and we learned that last year, we lost. We lost big first, um, and it, it took some results. It, it was it, it was, was out of hands, and it was tough, that. and it was. It was the biggest uphill battle I think I've ever fought, and um, I think my, maybe what helped us out there was thinking we have to do it. We can't lose. We must win, um, and so that's kind of my philosophy going into tomorrow's game. Where 
even though it's the opening round, it's the first game, I'm treating them as if they're the defending champions. We need to make a statement. We need to win. And so that's that's my philosophy going into tomorrow's matchup. Definitely. And uh, with Ghana as your second game, it, it'd be very easy to you know kind of kind of write them off on the calendar and move on yeah, to your second game. Exactly. And then finishing the tournament off with defending runner-ups in Australia in the house, it's you, you can't look forward to the next game. You gotta you gotta keep the next game in the back of your mind. But in the current game, you gotta you have to win. You have to you have to perform. Well, uh, as as big as your um, opening game with Uruguay is probably the biggest game of the yes, round yes, is the uh, yes. New Zealand Niger game, and uh, there's Jeez. been a lot of jabbering and you know, a lot of jabbering, a lot of talk. It's uh, and just I I'm guilty. I'll admit I'm guilty. I've been stirring the pot. I've been uh, throwing in some comments there. There's rumor that I actually hate some of the players on uh, New Zealand's team. I'd like to. Uh, Look directly into the camera and say, I love everybody on New Zealand's team. No hard feelings anywhere. Mm -hmm. just, just trying to stir that pot, make some more excitement, bring some more fans hopefully to this game. But yeah. like you said, it's going to be, that is going to be a battle. And it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be very physical. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, both teams have so many weapons. And yeah. both, you have to say, both, either of those teams, if they lifted the trophy on 26, I know I wouldn't be very surprised. Yes, yeah, I mean, it, if you had someone coming into your backyard and not knowing what exactly was going on, they could easily mistake that for the finals. Yeah. The fact that the strengths of each team is just intense. and um, It's just incredible that those two... What an, I, I, I'm speechless. What an opening game. Yeah. Well, uh, let's talk tactics a little bit on this game. and uh, I mentioned it in the article a little bit earlier. And I, you know, I think if I were a New Zealand fan, the one thing that I would be worried about is that they choose to play... Cause and you remember this from last year, and we played them as well, that they'll play their straight 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one formation where it's just a straight line with Greta up top. Um, and if if Niger played a diamond, you would you would be concerned that he's going to like get dominated in the midpool. Yeah, um, it'll be tough because if you look at if you look at the midfield of Niger, oh my god. Probably, you got, probably the best Probably the, the best in the tournament. Yeah. Um, you, got, you got Brady Stevenson and James Craven working and dominating that midfield. Both guys have size. Both guys have strength, and it's just so easy to dominate, um, dominate possession, but also dominate the other team. Just right. strength and push. Well, them. defensively too, they create so many opportunities being aggressive. Yeah, and they they're since they, they play the midfield so well, they'll push up and attack, um, but then they're also right there. They play a little deep too, so then they're easily they just drop right back on defense, right. and they just and they're they're a pressing team too. Oh, for sure. They're, they're not going to hang back and play defense in the deep end. If they're defending the deep end, they're going to be up in the shallow end, pressing, doing almost a uh, full court press style of basketball. Well, the one thing that I'll say is we played them a few weeks ago against Niger and they're friendly. And the, the one thing that I noticed is that we had some opportunities in the break because they pressed yeah. so high. Because once you get, if you have, um, especially if they come out with a striker and those two in the midfield, you'll have situations where all three of them are closely, closely in a, uh, almost a ball and grouping. In the shallow end, leaves so much space. Behind. So much space behind them, and, and Greta can exploit that space. Greta can exploit. Um, in the both games he played against us, um, the group game and the third place game, he was just always constant threat. Uh, the ball could be anywhere. It could be, you know, if you miss wide and go in your neighbor's yard, he's still a threat because he's always there. He's always lurking, and he's. I mean, what he does with the ball, it's it's incredible. When he's he's a striker. Um, I was honored to be. Um, in the same category as him as co goal and flipper winner. He was uh, my partner in goal scoring, um, or goal scoring in total. Um, but it was two different styles. I would push people out of the way and take a power shot, and he would he'd swim with the ball. And he's he's got this death grip on it, where once he puts his hand on the ball, he's not losing it, and he just he just jukes you out. And he's fast, he's quick, he's agile, and he'll I mean he'll power through you too. Right. And so you if you're not you gotta key in on him on defense. Right. And make sure he doesn't... And the thing is, if he gets double or triple team, he's, he still has a chance to score. Yeah. Um, and then especially, too, if you double or triple team him, you've got the likes of um, Jeremy Hatchin in the midfield and the newcomers, Daniel Ernest and uh, Zach Priester, coming up and supporting. And so if he's if you key on him too much, then you're just opening him up for the other members of the team to score. Definitely. Definitely. But it, um, it will be very interesting to see what both teams do tactically because... We saw last year when uh, New Zealand played Australia, and then they played Germany mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the 
Giants getting the group stage. Two teams that are notorious, especially Australia, for pressing so high at the mm -hmm. pool. And they struggle pretty yeah, bad, yeah. you know. And, uh, and you know, as we saw last year, Jake Reddick can struggle with the mental game. As great a striker as he is, sometimes he can get frustrated and uh, kind of fade out of the game. But, yeah, well, if he, if he gets annoyed a little bit, he'll, he'll tend to um, lose focus. Right. Lose. But uh, it'll, be, it'll be very interesting. Um, so uh, that game is on Sunday. Yeah, PM. It'll be on the prime time. Prime, yeah. It's like prime time. 6 p.m. Um, Eastern or Pacific. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so next we're gonna talk to uh, we're gonna talk to New Zealand captain Jeremy Hash. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Game. You're trying to you're trying to get out easy here, aren't you? <laughs> Let's go predictions, buddy. Oh, you're I'm sorry. To, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's it's you're right. You know, it's 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 awkward because I mean, we're, uh, all, we're all friends here. We're all right? friends. But, uh, it's gonna be such a, it's gonna be such a good game. Yeah, but who do you like? Like you touch base on. I mean, it's. New Zealand has struggled with size in the past. Um, I mean, they're great is strong, um, but the rest of the team, it's I mean, they're, they they struggle with strength, and so um, it all depends on you know anything can happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I think um, Niger will be just a little bit too strong for them, um, and so I say Niger wins seven five. Um, you know, it's it's one of those games where I definitely think it's fifty fifty. It's a toss up. Um, I, you know, I think New Zealand's experience might be too much for Niger mm -hmm. tomorrow. I think that because uh, if you look at it, Niger's never won a polo cup. That's right. No, the one thing never won in the tournament. Right. We have never we haven't talked to this, and Niger has zero polo cup zero victories wins. all time. Um, so. so as well as they played last summer, it's yeah. still no victories. No victories. And they won the one friendly against Ghana, but they did lose to Australia. Also, yeah. I think I think Jay Coretta is too much for them. Uh, offensively, I think that he's just too good of a striker, and as good as Bracey is in his play, um, I think he, he struggled against Chris Morrow when, mm -hmm. when he played us. Um, and I think that I think that Jeremy Hatch is a great goalkeeper, and his distribution will probably be spot on as always. Mm -hmm. And uh, if Daniel Ernest can have a good game, I think he'll be a linchpin for them as well. So yeah. but I, I think New Zealand will be too much for them. I think it'll be really, really low scoring. And I think I think five to four would probably be five my prediction. Four. So. And uh, next, now next, we'll uh, we'll speak yeah, with yeah. Jeremy Hatchin and what he thinks about the game. So. Yeah,